So we are interested in the flow of energy through the climate system. So since March of 2000, we have instruments on spacecraft that are attempting to measure the, uh, the energy flows. So they're measuring the reflected radiation, uh, the incoming radiation, and the long wave radiation that's going back to space and therefore uh, computing the net radiation at the top of the atmosphere. But we also, me also measure winds and humidity and, and pressure and rainfall and you know, even radiation and other more exotic quantities. But then we also try to do that now in the ocean. And this, this is a, a very key thing now that we have new sensors within the ocean, uh, floats that reside about one kilometer below the surface of the ocean, they go down to about two kilometers down, and then uh, every five days to a week or something like that, they pop up and make measurements of temperature and salinity in the ocean. And then when they get to the surface, they telemeter that back to satellites, and so we get a measurement of the ocean profile of, of heat. The ocean heat content comes out of that. But the record is quite short, so we need to keep that going but these floats do not go in places where there is ice. And so the Arctic and where seasonal ice occurs and in the Antarctic is not sampled by these. We also have measurements of sea level from uh, satellites. And we have measurements at the surface of the sea surface temperature using a, another set of um, measurements and, and satellite instruments and also from ships. And we have measurements of the surface winds which drive the ocean currents and move the ocean heat around. It's an amazing system where all of the countries have come together really under the auspices of the World Meteorological Organization under the United Nations in order to share all of this data for the benefit of everyone. In the United States these are pulled together through NOAA primarily. Uh, other measurements from space, some of them come from NASA uh, and, as I say, uh, others come from other countries. Uh, and so there's, there's certainly prospects for better coverage and, uh, and you know, more observations that will uh, give us greater confidence as to uh, what the state of the ocean is, what the state of the climate system is, and also from space what the net energy imbalance is. There is another method that we can try to use, and that is by using a really good climate model, which is the sort of thing we do here at NCAR. And if we put all of the external influences onto that climate model, what the sun is doing and how it's changing over time, what the composition of the atmosphere is, both from human effects the changes in the greenhouse gases, and also from natural events like volcanoes, how much debris there is in the atmosphere and so on, uh, then we can calculate the energy imbalance that we expect. And we can look at all of these three methods and try to reconcile them. And so this is what some of our research is designed to do and to see the extent to which together they all make sense, both over time and in an absolute sense. And provide then a, a, a better estimate as to what is happening both in the atmosphere and the ocean and then we can relate these to the changes that we're looking for in terms of climate.